Prime, serving America's great sports networks. To an evening of Missouri Valley Conference basketball, co-starring the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and featuring the MVC's preseason player of the year, Shea Seals. Also featured, 6'11 senior Ray Poindexter playing his best basketball of the year. Hosting tonight's star-studded affair, the Bradley Braves. Their act has played in Peoria for years, and now they're ready to take the show on the road to the NCAA tournament. With senior guard Billy Wright, Anthony Parker, some great teamwork, plus senior Deion Jackson, Bradley is ready for the limelight. They host Tulsa Neck in the MVC Game of the Week. Peoria, Illinois, with the Braves fans ready for their team to take a half a game lead in the Missouri Valley Conference race. Bradley and Illinois State have identical eight and two records, but the visitors from Tulsa would like nothing more than to throw this thing wide open in their final Missouri Valley Conference visit to Bradley. A very pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Bob Rathman. My partner is Jim Gibbons, and welcome to the MVC Game of the Week. Both ball clubs, Jim, have won 13 games this season, and that's just the beginning of the similarity. Well, Bob, they both have size, they have strength, and they've got depth. They've got perimeter shooting, they lack an inside presence, but they both play very hard, and they play very good defense. And to win this game tonight, they'll need big nights from their big stars, and we have two of the biggest in college basketball, Chase. Seals of Tulsa, Anthony Parker of Bradley. Well, Shea Seals was voted in the preseason as the player of the year. Anthony Parker was second, Bob. And a lot of similarities here because they are both very fine three-point shooters. They are both slashers and drivers. They are both very, very good rebounders. And I want to tell you something. They are the go-to guys, and they're going to get a lot of touches tonight. And Parker playing sensational basketball. The GM card, keys to the game. The Golden Hurricane is shooting only 42% from the floor in conference games, so no question, Jim, that offensive execution is a must. Well, that's the first thing they told me, Jim. We have got to hit some shots, and when you're shooting 42%, you realize that. Secondly, opponents are shooting only 39% against Tulsa, Bob. They don't want to give Bradley any easy baskets. The third thing, Steve Robinson said to me, Jim, I'm worried about the crowd. I don't want our people to play out of control. Now for the Bradley Brave, Jim Molinari said, we have to shoot a good percentage from the perimeter, Jim, because with their size and strength, I don't think we're going to get many inside shots. They've got to control Cordell Love's three-point shooting because he tied a school record by hitting six in a game earlier this year. Lastly, he said we can defend on that first shot. It's the second and third kickbacks that we can't afford to give Tulsa. So the stage has been set for this marquee matchup between Tulsa and Bradley. And we'll meet the starting lineups when we come back. Hold it. This isn't you. It's an older guy. Oh, that was before I got rid of my gray hair with Just For Men hair color. Come on. That's too natural to be hair coloring. Just For Men. Apply and in five minutes rinse. Gray is blended away for a totally natural look. Think it'll work for me? In five minutes. Just For Men. Looks too natural to be hair coloring. And now try Just For Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out. Just five minutes. At Aramark, we know great things happen when you put on a uniform. Aramark Uniform Services, America's largest uniform. At Aramark, we know great things happen when you put on a uniform. Aramark Uniform Services, America's largest uniform company. There is still a place in America that is waiting to be discovered. A place where you can sit outside and stare at the stars. Or come inside and do the same. Where getting high means a roller coaster ride, or a walk on an Ozark mountaintop. A place where people are so proud of their work, they put their name on it. It's called Branson, Missouri, and it's for everyone who wants to rediscover America.
is brought to you by Diet Pepsi, proud sponsor of the 1996 Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Tournament. By State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Budweiser, the king of beers, to remind you, friends know when to say when. And by Old El Paso. A cold night in Peoria, but we got a full hot gym ready for basketball. Carver Arena in the heart of Illinois. Here are tonight's Bud Light starting lineups for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Up front, Jay Seals scoring at 18.2 a game. Along with Dwayne Bonner in the backcourt, Ray Poindexter draws the start at center tonight, and Michael Ruffin joins Seals at the starting lineup. And Steve Robinson in his first year as the Tulsa head coach the man from Roanoke, Virginia, has got it Tulsa to a 13-4 record. For the Bradley Braves, they're starting backcourt of Billy Wright and Anthony Parker in a dynamic backcourt it is. In the middle of the night, Chad Klein gets the start, the redshirt senior from Indiana. And starting up front, Dwayne Funches and Deion Jackson. And the head coach of the Bradley Braves is Jim Molinari. The 41-year-old Chicago native, 2-2 two two lifetime against Tulsa in this building. And we're ready for what should be a whale of a game. Jackson and Ruffin to tip it. And Tulsa controls the opening tip. I suspect that both teams are going to start in into straight man-to-man -man defense, Bob. And as I said, both of them play really great pressure defense. Bonner on the cut. Here's Cordell Love. Back to Bonner. Penetrates in the middle and lays it in. That's a good matchup. They got him matched out right there with Chad Klein, and there's no way on that position on the floor that Klein is going to guard Bonner. Here's Parker. Fitting it now to Billy Wright. Tipped away. Shields got a hand on it. Klein, is he able to save it? Yes. Into the hands of Jackson. Got Cordell. Love, not good overplay by Seals. And Shea is able to take it in. And Jim Gibbons shades oh, of last year's game here. You bet. It when Tulsa started 14 to nothing. And don't think the brave the Bradley people aren't aware of that because I've had a number of them tell me the very same thing. It's still in the back of their minds. Cordell Love is guarding Anthony Parker. That's a good matchup. Jackson. A little short. Tipped last by Poindexter. And the Braves have it. <coughs> 4-0 Tulsa, just underway. Jim Molinari in his fifth year at the helm here at Bradley with 74 wins and 62 defeats. His ball club at 8-2 in conference play. Watch the motion offense now. A lot of touches. That's the one thing Jim Molinari said to me last night when we were talking. We need a lot of touches on offense. Jackson with the fit. Here's Anthony Parker. And a tipped pass, and Ruffin with the steal. Great overplay again by Tulsa. One thing they worked on in their shoot-around today, wasn't it, Bob? Remember everything Steve Robinson said was get the arms out, get the hands out into the passing lanes, and they've done that on both possessions so far. Jay Seals backing out with it to Bonner. Now, here's Ruffin going to work. Poindexter up high. That's a good match again. Bonner on, on uh, Klein. And the freshman from Colorado puts it in. Michael Ruffin scores. 6 8 2 25. 6 to nothing. Parker a little long. It rims out. Rebounded by Shea Seals. Seals drops it for Ruffin. That's an offensive foul. Very good call. You could see that Shea went about two dribbles too far. He had to look for the trailers right there. He saw him behind him, but boy, that's the way to give yourself up and a good call. And Bradley uses a 20-second timeout, and I think wisely so for Jim Molinari. His ball club is 
been taken out of its flow offensively. Absolutely. They're getting nothing on the offensive end, and defensively, the matchups haven't been good. Bob, he told me yesterday, I'm happy with my matchups on Seal and Love and Bonner, but I'm not comfortable with the inside matchups. And, and if, they, if, if Tulsa exploits that, that's good. Now, see there? You've heard me say a lot of times, Bob, there's anticipators and there's reactors. And you lose with reactors, you win with anticipators because there's a guy that anticipated, got into the lane, got himself an end-to-end -end, end -end bucket. Counting that layup by Shea Seals, all six Tulsa points inside. That one coming in transition. Six to nothing. The Golden Hurricane. Jackson too long. Klein is able to save it. And Bradley maintains possession. Billy Wright in a mismatch with Poindexter. Puts home Bradley's first bucket of the game. Pretty good. They're going to give Billy a lot of room outside, Bob, because he's not scoring a lot, and he doesn't shoot a lot, and he doesn't have to. But that time he created something, and that's what somebody had to do for them. The players and the coaching staff vote on the Bradley lineup, but you'll find Billy Wright's name in that lineup no matter what, every night. He'll never be out of it. We'll talk about his assist to turnover ratio when we get a chance. Seals inside to point Dexter. This kid's been red hot. Misses this shot and punches the rebound. Playing with enthusiasm and confidence is Dwayne Funches. Wright kicks it out to Klein. On the cut to Jackson. A little daylight and a fly swatted out of bounds by Ray Poindexter. And a foul, too. The foul's going to be on seal. Take a look right now at, at Dwayne Funches right now because he is probably the most improved player in the Valley. Watch. Did you see him get his body into the defender? Got him back right away. Bang. Right there and got the rebound. The foul on the driving Jackson committed by Seals. And for Shea, that's his second. And it comes with 16-26 remaining in the first half. Deion Jackson going to the foul line. Obviously, that creates a little bit of a problem, Bob, for Steve Robinson. Because you got your premier player with two fouls, and only four minutes have been played in the game. Deion Jackson, if successful on this free throw, will move past the great Bob Carney here at Bradley and into 12th on the all-time scoring list for the Braves. 6-4, to four, Tulsa. Rod Thompson has come in for Shea Seals. And has it at the top of the key. Inside point, Dexter. Nice feed and a great catch by Ruffin. Count the bucket and a Bradley foul on Funches. Boy, that is really being unselfish because he had the shot. He had Klein backed in. All he had to do was take that baby hook right there, Bob. Watch now. Watch. He sees the opening as the defense rotated down inside. Good two-hand catch. There's a young man who has been playing terrific basketball for them. Michael Ruffin has really come on. He's their second leading rebounder, a man who's very athletic, a quick jumper, and has great potential. From Inglewood, Colorado, and Cherry Creek High School, Ruffin completes the three-point play, and a change for Tulsa. Greg Hernady is coming into the game, Boy, that's and good. Ruffin is out. Good minutes out of Ruffin, Bob, right? Exactly. Little full court pressure right here at 2 2 1. Let's see how, let's see if they try to trap her if it's just token pressure right here. Parker getting it over now to right. Skips it across to Klein. Had a look, didn't Boy, take that's it. That's the pass that you want to make it. But you know, if, if Jim's looking for a lot of touches, Bob, he probably didn't want him to take that shot with no rebounders. Stripped. Jackson gets it back. Triple teamed and taking it right away from him is Dwayne Bonner. Tulsa leading 9-4. Maldonado is in the game. See, they're going to give him that shot also. No way Funches is going to come out. Funches is going to stay right back there and block it. And a blocking foul on Billy Wright. Now, just so our viewers will realize, Bob, both teams are using the same kind of emotion offense with the passing, the movement, and the screening. And now the coaches will talk about it with their respective ball clubs at timeout in Peoria.
Now, Paradise Riverboat Casino presents live in concert the legendary Wayne Newton. Thank you for all the joy and pain. What an incredible night, March 4th at Peoria Civic Center. The spectacular Wayne Newton. Reserve seat tickets as low as 1950 include show ticket, casino cruise, and prime rib dinner buffet. Cruise and dinner coupons good through May 23rd. Make your day to come and play. As business owners, we understand the importance of efficient day-to-day -day operations. And at Bradfield's Computer Supply, we're in the business of making your company work more efficiently. Bradfield's provides the latest technology, including magnetic media, ribbons and toner, accessories, printers, workstations, and filing systems. Bradfield's Computer Supply is Central Illinois' largest stocking dealer. We have all the tools you'll need, and most supplies can be ordered with next-day delivery. Call Bradfield's Computer Supply, providing business solutions for a fast-paced world. This telecast is authorized under the rights granted to Prime by the Missouri Valley Conference and Bradley University and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of Prime, the Missouri Valley Conference and Bradley University is prohibited. With Jim Gibbons, Bob Rathman in Peoria, at a 9-4 lead for the visitors from Tulsa. Shooting stats, Bradley only 25%. Bob, they've got three turnovers, and Tulsa has converted four points on two of those turnovers. Bradley just not in sync offensively. Bonner in and out, and a flat-footed rebound for Klein, and he is fouled. That's the first on the freshman from Tulsa, Johnny Gendron. Young man that played a lot of minutes when I did the Illinois State Tulsa game, Bob, and boy, he came off the bench. He is a fine basketball player. Played some pro baseball with the Pittsburgh Pirates. 24-year-old <laughs> freshman, so he has a bit of an advantage. I got a chuckle out of the press guy. He said he retired at the ripe old age of 21. <laughs> There's their shooter. There's Nobridge the puts it on. That's a two-pointer to make it 9-6. Jim Molinari said, Jim, we've got to hit the outside shots. That's the first one they've hit. They've got to open something inside up. And a foul inside on Tulsa. Hernady trying to get position. Commits his first foul. 9-6. And just under 15 to play. Right. Surveys the situation and then another illegal him. screen inside on Bradley. Calling them pretty close in this basketball game, Bob. And you and I talked about it. And it's something I didn't think they were going to do. I thought this crew might let them play a little. I know they're going to do it under the boards, but they're calling a lot of illegal picks and screens. And there's going to be a ton of it by both teams, the back screens and the down screens. But they're making them take their position and hold it. Anthony Parker's first foul. Thompson. Time to go to work on Billy Wright. And another whistle, a three-second lane violation. Hernady got tangled up in there. And Tulsa turns it over again. I'll tell you, it's, it's been pretty tough the last two or three minutes. Let's, he's going to plant right in there. Let's take a look. Well, you can see it right now. He was there a little too long. But neither team has been able to get into any kind of a rhythm or a sink on offense, Bob. And that's the point that you were making earlier, Jim, about the defenses of these two teams. They're pretty nasty. If the shooting percentages are bad, it's not going to be because they're not good shooters on the floor. It's because you've got two teams playing great defense. Tulsa is a pressure defense. And we've got a, another illegal screen. This one is going to go against Ben Copet. Let me, let me keep going on the defense. Tulsa is a pressure defense. They're going to get up into the lane and they're going to overplay the passing lanes. On the other hand, Bradley is a position defensive team. So you've got two teams that are great defensively using different styles. If they call all the illegal screens tonight, oh, there won't look, be anybody left. Bet. The way it's going right now, you're right. We may have to suit you up. I, that's one thing I could do with play defense. I couldn't shoot. Baseline runner bounces in. Rod Thompson, first bucket of the ball game. 11-6 Tulsa. See, the other thing about defense, Bob, in this kind of a game, 
when you play good defense and the team knows it and they're trying to get a lot of touches, if you go 20, 25, 30 seconds playing that good defense, you better not break down in that last five to 10 seconds because that's what kills them now. Tulsa jumps right into the zone and Steve Robinson told us today, we'll do a little bit of that. That's a good change right now. Just extend on the three-point shooters. Parker. His 47th of the year. And he's hitting 41% of them. That might take him right out of the zone, the next possession. <laughs> and for the first time tonight, this sellout crowd is getting into things. Maldonado inside with Copet. Really physical in the shot is good. Dwayne Bonner's second bucket, he's got four. Oh, and a steal by Thompson. Goes in and gets hammered. The foul on Zobrist. Boy, you aren't going to see that very often. Just kind of dribbling the basketball up the floor, and I took a quick look because I was going to see the defense, but I turned, and all of a sudden, I think the ball, I think it bounced right off of his foot, Bob. And look, at, take a look. Just right before that, the ball just came right off the foot and landed right in Robinson's hands. A wonderful free throw shooter, Rod Thompson. 86% for the season coming in. Hits the first one. Love is back. And Gendron is out. This guy, Rod Thompson's been giving them good minutes. He's very aggressive with the basketball. And they're expecting big things. And there's the trap right there in the corner. Good reaction by Zobrist. He got rid of the ball right in time, Bob. Did get out of that zone, didn't he? <laughs> it took about one shot. One shot. <laughs> Parker. <laughs> leans in. Banks and misses. Maldonado clears. Tulsa trying to get something in transition. Thompson baseline. Six for Rod Thompson. Tulsa 17 to 9. An eight-point lead for the Golden Hurricane. Their biggest lead tonight. And we've got a foul. And this one will be on Craig Grenady. It See, has not been a very no. good half for Craig. Well, He's had some tough time. What's going on right now, Bob? Now, let, how about if we, are they going to call a tv -er? If not, See, not yet. that time Anthony Parker was dribbling that basketball way too much. Not much good happens when you dribble the ball too much because you're giving the defense a chance to set. <laughs> that leads me to believe that Tulsa is taking Bradley out of its offensive execution. They're pushing him out of their comfort zone. Oh, here comes Ruffin to spring a trap on right. He tried to dribble away from it. The blocking foul is called on Rod Thompson. Now we'll have that timeout. 11.55 left in the half and 17-9 Tulsa. No matter how long it takes to get your diet Pepsi, don't worry. Ah! Great taste is always guaranteed. Just made it! Yes! Ha. Straw? Harvey Penick was perhaps golf's greatest teacher. To share in his legacy, call 1-800-985-8080 and order the Little Green video. Featuring 1992 U.S. Open champion Tom Kite and two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw, the Little Green video contains more than 70 minutes of lessons, stories, tips, and drills. Rated four stars by Golf Magazine, the Little Green video gives you instant access to the secrets that have helped thousands play their best. Call 1-800-985-8080. Order the Little Green video today. 
Tulsa leading 17-9. At National Rental, you'll get weekend rates so low that every weekend is a national holiday. National features vehicles from compact to luxury cars, as well as minivans. National is the official car rental of the Missouri Valley Conference and the NCAA. Call National today at 1-800-CAR-RENT and start your national holiday. 17-9 Tulsa. And we've got a foul on Tulsa as they spring the double team. And Chase Seals has picked up his third. Oh, my. It comes with 11.54 remaining in the first half. Bradley threw the ball the one place I didn't think they wanted to throw it, Bob. And that was right down in the corner. And as soon as Shea reached in, he did the wrong thing. You've got the trap on. There's no use reaching. So the Tulsa big gun has to sit down, and he'll be out for the rest of the half. Jackson to the foul line, where tonight he's two out of two. Jackson's third point of the game. He had been in a slump, Jim, until Wednesday. Broke out of it here against Drake when he scored 16. Hard to believe that this senior from Dayton went scoreless against Wichita. And they have kept him out, and he's been shooting two and 300 shots every day over and above the practice time. Yeah, they've really been working hard with that young man. He is an incredibly uh, favorite of the people here in, in Peoria. J.R. Rollo has checked into the Tulsa lineup. He gets it underneath and puts it in. Tulsa just punishing Bradley inside. That's why they're shooting 70%. They were 7 of 10 before that shot, and you took the words out, Bob. They've been getting everything inside as opposed to Bradley, who hasn't gotten much of anything inside. Cooley over and out of right. On the cut, here's the runner up and off. No good by Burrell. It's going to be into the hands of Tulsa, and Love gets it across to Bonner. Love looks inside. Nothing available this time. And back out for the reset with Dwayne Bonner. Moving over to the point guard position this year for Tulsa. Now that Pooh Williamson is gone. There you That's go. shot clock becoming a factor. As it hits 10, Love, a little long. Good rebound by Akinkule. Right. Behind the back. And an offensive foul as Billy Wright, after he threw the basketball, commits the personal. Boy, give a lot of credit to Tulsa because that's twice they've given themselves up. Look at that. Banner was set all the way. There was no question about it. Billy just didn't look soon enough after he made, behind, watch, behind the back pass. He had his head up. I'm surprised he didn't see him, Bob. But Banner took that charge, and that's the way to give yourself up. Tulsa leading 19-11. Well, a good matchup with the big guys inside with Ruffin and Akin Kule and Rallo and Kupep. That's that's two, that's four big bodies. Thompson brings it out. Shot clock at six, five, and a near steal by Parker. Tulsa gets the shot away. Too long by Thompson. Now Burrell to Parker. Anthony to the bucket. And a blocking foul on Tulsa. And that, my friend, is a good call because that defensive player moved just as Anthony. Now, Anthony has left his feet, but watch Johnny Gender. He moved, see? He slid right over and forced that contact right there. Anthony just didn't convert, but that's a very good call. Parker. Eighth in the Missouri Valley, 81.5% of the line. That's his fourth point. Had a huge night as we see Point Dexter come back for Tulsa. Parker scored 30 out west when Bradley knocked off Georgia Tech. A huge win for the Braves. And Parker now with five tonight. Hit a three-pointer earlier. 19-13. Keep in mind, Shea Seals is out for Tulsa with those three personals. See, what Bradley needs to do, Bob, is to get a couple of stops. They've got to get two or three stops and then come back and convert at the other end, get the crowd back into the game, and get some of that confidence back. And a steal. One way to stop it. Burrell. Travel. And a travel. 
So Bradley gives it right back to him. You take a look at Terry Burrell. That young man has been getting more minutes. He's been starting to score more, but his strength has always been defense, Bob. And when he comes in, that's usually the reason he's off that bench to come in defensively. One of those hard-nosed, <laughs> tough Chicago kids. And he's on Cordell Love, and that's why he's in there. Poindexter, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Ray Poindexter trying to make some room for himself, picks up his first personal. Well, I, I've got news for you, Bob, because I'm going to say this, and I hope you agree, because you do a lot more basketball than I. We'll watch it while I'm, I'm talking about this. I think these players have got to start adjusting to the officiating, and it's because it's not going to go the other way. The officials aren't going to let things go. They're calling things, and those players have got to start looking, and they've got to realize what they can do and what they can't do. Well, we've played 10 minutes and 39 seconds, and already 15 fouls have been called. There's no question about it, and I put the responsibility on the players. There are certain officials that will let you get away with things inside in the post play. They'll let you set some picks and screens that might not be completely legal, but they're not letting that, get, that kind of stuff go tonight, and you've got to adjust. Capet goes one for two, 19-14. And we've got a foul inside on Bradley. Akin Cooley with another personal. And that is going to put Tulsa in the bonus. Michael Ruffin to the foul line for the Golden Hurricane. He's been a double figures three times this season already with five here in the first half. <laughs> He'll get the bonus shot. He's been a starter for them, Bob. Boy, he is good. It's a, that's a freshman you're looking at right there with a great body. I mean, that is terrific. He's 6'8", 225. You know he's going to get on the weights the next couple of years. He's going to fill out. He has tremendous potential, I feel. And he will gain more notoriety as the years go by thanks to his, uh, his pets. He's got reptiles and crocodiles and lizards and mud turtles and everything else at home. <laughs> Be careful when you go over to his house. Here's a tip away. But Bradley turns it into transition and a foul. Well, Anthony had himself trapped, boy, because they threw that ball right into the corner. As I've always said, you've got to try to keep it out of there, Bob. Watch the reach right here. Burrell right there. There's the reach in. No question about the call. Dwayne Bonner just didn't get away with the reach in. Ten fouls on Tulsa now, Jim, and that means Bradley's in the double bonus the rest of the half. 9.05 left. They lead the Valley in free throw shooting at 71 percent and they've shot you can believe it a hundred more free throws than their opponents they have almost crossed that line where they have made more than the opposition has attempted 21 16. Given Ruffin all the room he wants outside. Funches better guard him now, though, because that's where he's at his best. And Michael Ruffin with nine. Funches only 6'5", Ruffin 6'8". That's a good matchup for Tulsa. Burrell, low, Parker, up and off. And Ruffin gets it over to his teammate, Gendron. And here comes Tulsa once again. Tough pass in the lane. And Bradley's got it on a breakaway. Parker now with seven. 23-18. It's a five-point lead. Gendron, short. And Bradley can't handle the ball on the end line. I'll tell you what, Bob. We've got a timeout on the floor here in Peoria with 7.50 left in the opening half. It's hard to think of something more important to a kid than their bike. 
That's why State Farm, along with the help of the Good Neighbor, sponsors the Bike Rodeo, just one of the many safety programs we support throughout the country. It's where we give kids a lesson in bike safety, to help make sure their bikes are in good condition, and to teach kids to ride more responsibly. Because at State Farm, we want to make sure children are safe, no matter where their bikes take them. State Farm is there. For 1996, we redesigned everything. For a new style, a new spirit. Not because we want to be the best thing on the road, but rather, the best thing in the air. The employee owners of Transworld Airlines grew up to something good. Hi, I'm Linda Carter, and I'm here to tell you why ordering your contact lenses direct from Lens Express is such a great idea. We're America's largest contact lens replacement service. Call now for a free catalog and save up to 50% by ordering direct from Lens Express. And I get the exact lenses my doctor prescribed or my money back. Now that's what I call service. I couldn't do without Lens Express. Call this number now for a free Lens Express catalog. A Tulsa five-point lead as we welcome you back to the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. Look for the Rawlings play of the game later in tonight's telecast. The winning shot, a big rebound, perhaps a key defensive move. We'll show it to you on the Rawlings play of the game. It's well, been a tense, yeah, Mr. That, Gibbons. That's it. There was the kickback right there. There was not enough spacing, Bob, but it wound up in Anthony's hands, and there was no question he was going to stuff it and get the crowd right back into the game. Parker in the game here last year had 15 points and five rebounds, and then he's hit for 25 against Tulsa in last year's Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. That game coming in the semifinals. First trap in the corner right there. Bradley trapped right in the corner. Good reading by Tulsa. Love. Connects. Cordell's first bucket of the game. That's, that's why he's taken 129 of them so far this year. The three-pointer gives Tulsa the 26-18 advantage. One comment I was going to make earlier, Bob, I think Tulsa's size and strength inside has really been bothering uh, Bradley on its offensive end. Don't you agree? Yes. I don't think Bradley's gotten a second effort, have they, on any shot? I don't think they've gotten no. a kickback. It's been one and done. Parker gets it back. There's an offensive rebound. And it's stripped. Funches up strong. Well, you knew as soon as I mentioned it, something would happen, right? <laughs> it's kind of the reverse uh, hex. Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys! Love. Looks inside to point Dexter. Tipped up and in by her nady. My goodness. He got that one off his fingernails. That's twice they've caught Bradley where the defensive player, Bob, didn't have a position where he could see the man with the ball and the, and the man he was guarding. Jackson short, point next to the board. And that's a good entry pass. Both times Tulsa has read that beautifully. Great point, Dexter. has been averaging 11 points and 9 rebounds the last five games off the bench. Started tonight. Love another three. They don't love it in Peoria. It's 31-20. Uh, timeout, a, that's Bradley. A good, that's a good timeout. I want youngsters to watch Love. You talk about catching the ball in a position to shoot it, Bob. That's what he's done both times. 6-10 left in the half. Tulsa by 11. When the bear comes out of hibernation, what? motor skills are awkward. He is bad-tempered. He hears little, sees less. But his sense of smell remains keen. The bear sniffs. The refreshing scent of coast revives him. Massive lather engulfs him. After which he becomes friendly and playful and can learn to do tricks. Coast, the eye-opener. Make it a slam dunk weekend in St. Louis, March 1st through the 4th for the 1996 Diet Pepsi Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. See exciting NCAA college basketball at Keel Center in St. Louis, where eight teams will compete for the coveted league championship and a trip to the NCAA tournament. Kick off the tournament weekend Friday night, March 1st, with the Branson Spectacular Concert at the new Trans World Dome. Superstar entertainers from Branson, Missouri, with Andy Williams and Glenn Campbell, along with Sony Orlando and Charlie Pride, will perform. Tickets are now on sale at NBC Schools or call 1-800-916-0041. He calls out to the man on the street. Sir, can you help me? 
there is help for thousands of people with disabilities who are homeless. If you work with an organization that helps the homeless, you should know about SSI. SSI means monthly cash payments, food stamps, and medical benefits. SSI means help for the homeless. To find out more about SSI, contact Social Security. You vote for your favorite all-time MDC players for the Missouri Valley Conference, AT&T Hall of Fame. Simply call 1-900-4204-MDC. The cost of the caller, $1.99 per minute. Steve Robinson's ball club has been dynamite on the road. The last three years in the conference, 24 and 8. And they've got a nice 11 point lead here in the first half tonight. A lot of the Tulsa points inside, but Cordell Love has just hit a couple of threes. Yeah, they're shooting 63% right now. Parker tries to retaliate, and Love jumps in to get the rebound. The senior from Dallas plays it ahead. Tulsa in control of this first half. Maldonado, tough pass inside, a nice knock away by Chad Klein, and Bradley just can't get it going the other way. And the reason Chad Klein was able to do that, Bob, is because her lady never moved out to meet the basketball. That's one of my pet peeves, and I see it all the time, and he let Klein get right around him and slap the ball right away. All he had to do was move to the basketball. Bonner. Nice shot on the baseline for the Dallas senior. He's got six, 33-20. It's a crucial part of this game uh -huh. now for Bradley. You bet, because now Tulsa wants to go down five minutes and, and put the pressure on now, but now is when Bradley's got to come back. And Bunches drives the lane to stuff it. Tulsa has been able to forge this lead yep. without Shea Seal. It's amazing. You know, they talk about the first five minutes of the second half, Bob, but right now, I think Bradley's got to get their act together and get back in this basketball game. And Hernady had slipped out of his hand. 33-22, Tulsa. Just under five to play in the first half, 4.53. A lot of changes now well, for right Bradley. Now, I was just Billy counting Wright's bodies to see if each one had only five on the <laughs> yeah. floor. Coulet, Coupet uh, and uh, Coupet are still in that lineup along with Funches and Parker. Funches. That's why well, he feels it. That's where he's at his best. And that's the most improved player in the Valley. Right there, that young man worked all summer on the weight and on his game, and it's paid off for him. The runner from the baseline by Gendron is good. His first two tonight, 35-24. Bradley's had a couple of buckets here, but Tulsa has answered. Parker. Akin Kulay. Up and no. Tip no. And a foul on Bayo. His second. Pretty good reaction to the glass right there by Bayo, but he just got a little too much body in on it. But boy, if he'd have come from a different angle, I think he might have had a chance with the long arms to be able to get a crack at that on a second kickback. Eight of ten from the free throw line this season for Johnny Gendron. Started one game earlier. Contest against Southwest Missouri State. Both teams shooting very well at the line, Bob. Tulsa was five to five, five for five at the last time out, and Bradley was nine of ten. Short and a lane violation against Bradley. And that will give a, a reprieve to Gendron. It's interesting here because I mentioned before that Bradley had shot a hundred more free throws and Tulsa has shot 115 more. So they're used to getting to that line. Thirty-six twenty-four Tulsa. Dion, they haven't gotten much out of Dion. He's not even in there right now, but boy, that, they haven't got anybody that's lighting it up for them. Bradley, I'm talking about. Nobody has caught on fire yet. They're hoping this young man can yep. do that. Parker was matched up with Jenwin right there. And this one is a loose in the lane. Parker, nice shovel to Funches for the jam. And a 
Rafa. That's where it's tough to match up with him because he has that great upper body strength, that 6'5 and 230. Now, when that ball was thrown in from out of bounds, Bob, you know that they say, look at, look at the power move in, beside, in between the big guy. You don't ever want to throw the ball back in underneath the opponents under your basket. Now, he didn't throw it right back in, but as long as you're throwing it, you should throw it all the way out as far as you can toward midcourt because what happened was the ball bounced right back into Bradley's hand, and they're on the line now for a chance at a three-pointer. This is the free throw. 36-26. Thompson. Bonner inside to point Dexter, and he's fouled. This time it's Coupet. Getting a lot of production, Bob, out of that very same play, because there it was again, where they lobbed the ball in, and they've got the defense, tried to come out in front, and they got the ball right over there, exactly. They got them the ball when they wanted it, where they wanted it, and the big guy is at the line. The third point tonight for the Oklahoma senior, Ray Poindexter. Creeping up on the Tulsa career block shots list at 57 coming into the game. Two behind Luster Johnson. In fourth place is Luster. Four now for Poindexter. It's 38-26 Tulsa. 2-2-1 press again. Wait, see if the trap comes on. That's good recognition. And Klein gets a nice look at it. Hell ball. And the arrow gives it to Bradley. And that's a shot Chad should have taken, Bob. I just thought he shot in too much of a hurry. They had a two-on-one. He should have gotten himself a little more under control before he took the shot. Baseline. Good defense by Ruffin. And inside Parker for the slam. Bradley's starting to get a few more inside baskets. That's exactly what I was going to say. They're looking a little more. They're getting enough touches. They're breaking down the defense a little bit. They're shutting Tulsa down at this end a little bit, Bob. So they're getting them a chance to get back in. They've got to keep it up and under double digits because they're at 10 right now. For the most part, they've been trading baskets. Boy, he's been on fire, hasn't he? Cordell Love with three threes for nine points. Nothing like that three-point shot to take the crowd out of the game. And boy, he's been set in perfect shooting form every look he's got at that basket. And his teammates have got the ball oh, right where, on his hands. Where he wanted it, when he wanted it. The reverse layup doesn't go for Klein. Bunches fights for it, takes charge, and misses. Out of bounds to Tulsa. 41-28. The one thing I've said many times, Bob, and you know it, most of basketball is played without the ball. Right. And that's why a guy like Lover, your scorers like Seals and your scorers like Anthony, you watch how hard they work to get themselves in a position to get that basketball. And that's what Love's been doing. Tulsa playing very much like the ranked club that it was in late December when they broke into the rankings after that 5-0 start. Bonner bangs in a three. Just his second three-pointer in a Valley game this season. 44-28. Klein for three. Short. Bunches jammed. Drayton three for two, though, won't get it done. Yep. Still a 14-point Tulsa lead. This one drops in another three for Bonner. Four threes in a row for Tulsa. My goodness. And in a flash, Tulsa has a 17-point lead. Parker for three. Yeah, I'm not sure that's what Bradley wants to do right now, Bob. You can't come down. That's what Jim was worried about, not getting enough touches. And That's Tulsa will take its 22nd timeout. 
Steve Robinson with 48-5 and 29 seconds in the shot clock wants to set up the strategy. Yep. Well, we've seen Dwayne Bonner with a couple of threes here, and as you look at the numbers, the big change, of course, is indeed at the point as he moves over for Pooh Williamson. Those are big shoes to fill. They not only lost Pooh, but they lost Kawanza Johnson, and that's why I thought it was going to put so much more pressure on Shea Fields because those guys were gone. Bonner with a dozen points, his season high, 17 against North Carolina AMT. Five straight threes for Tulsa, five of their last five, and the lead at 17. Tulsa spreading the floor as they work the shot clock down to 16. They've been executing their half-court offense pretty doggone well against uh, what I think is a terrific defense. Shot clock at four. Maldonado loads up. Rebound to Parker. 19 seconds left in the half. Anthony, nice spin. Had it poked away from behind by Love, and Tulsa's got it. Thompson brings it up. Moves underneath. Now back out oh, to that's Bonner. Good. That's very good. Four seconds. Three from the wing. The three-pointer rims out. Tipped out of bounds, and it belongs to Bradley with .6 left in the hand. Pretty good judgment, didn't you think, yes. Bob, by, by Bonner? He got that. Instead of playing out of control, he waited until they got some rebounders inside, and then they set up, and they got a good look at the basket. Parker will not take the shot, and the first half is history. Well, this sellout crowd at Carver Arena just has to congratulate Tulsa on a well-played first half. It's 47-30, the Golden Hurricane in front. Missouri Valley Conference basketball is brought to you by TWA. We're up to something good. By Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. By State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Diet Pepsi, proud sponsor of the 96 Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Tournament. The Kings of the Road, the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa leading here in Peoria, 47 to 30, and a frightening thought for Bradley fans. Tulsa was able to forge this big lead without Shea Seals. He went down with three personal fouls and nearly 12 minutes remaining in the half, and yet Tulsa was able to put on a big, strong finish to close the half. Some big threes from Cordell Love and Company, and they've got a nice working margin here at halftime. 47 to 30 is our halftime score. Great moments in Missouri Valley Conference history, sponsored by Gatorade. Few Missouri Valley Conference fans can forget the NIT tournaments of 81 and 82. Tulsa hadn't seen postseason action since 1969. So an NIT MVP, Greg Stewart, scored the championship game winner to defeat Syracuse in overtime. The celebration was on. For Coach Richardson, the Canes posted 26 victories. Bradley defeated Purdue in the championship game of the 82 Classic. Guided by head coach Dick Versace, the Braves won 26 games and also took the NBC's regular season crown. It's time now for this week's Diet Pepsi Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. This week's Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week is Bradley Jr. Anthony Parker. The Naperville, Illinois native led the Braves to a pair of wins in Indiana. At Evansville, the 6'6 wingman had a game-high 21 points with seven rebounds, two assists, and a block in just 19 minutes of play in Bradley's 11-point win over the Aces. Two nights later against Indiana State, Parker scored 23 more and seven rebounds. AP, Anthony Parker, the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. For the Valley Network, this is Dave Snell reporting. There is still a place in America. That Tulsa 47 and Bradley 30. And it was a dominating first half performance by Tulsa. Nine different players for Tulsa scored. They had five three-pointers in that first half. And as we take a look at the leading scorers, it was Dwayne Bonner to lead the way. He had two of those five threes and a dozen points. And meanwhile for Bradley, Dwayne Funches 
came through with 10 first half points in double figures for the 14th time this season. One of the few bright spots for Bradley. Well, tonight's game is not only a showdown for the Valley lead, but a matchup of two of the league's premier performers. And as Dave Stell reports, in the league's offensive statistical categories, Bradley's Anthony Parker is everywhere. For the past two seasons, Tulsa's Shea Seals has been among the top scorers, rebounders, and assist leaders in the Missouri Valley Conference. This season, he has company, as Bradley junior guard Anthony Parker has been in the top ten in all nine offensive categories the entire season. When the Naperville, Illinois native hits the floor, he has everyone's attention. I would say right now that Anthony Parker is probably the best player in the Valley, and uh, all around everything considered uh, he, he's probably uh, the best player uh, in our conference right now averaging 18 points per game with a career high 30 against the ACC's Georgia Tech the difference between his sophomore and junior seasons I think the big difference is that I'm taking what the defense gives me uh, you know if they give me a three-point shot I'm taking that you know if they uh, give me the drive or the pass you know just taking what the defense gives me and relaxing and playing my game if I have a great game offensively so be it but uh, you know I just try to do the little things and uh, all the things that my team needs me to do as far as rebounding assists and uh, you know if need be scoring Anthony's character is so strong that he listens I would say people with character you know are the type of the submit to authority and really want to learn and he's that kind of guy and uh, that's what makes him special he's probably not only one of our best players but he's one of our most coachable players Bradley the preseason favorites are right there in the Missouri Valley Conference race coming into today's much anticipated matchup between the preseason player of the year and his top challenger for the Missouri Valley Conference Network this is Dave Snell reporting AT&T presents today's Missouri Valley Conference legend. Percy Hawkins came to Peoria and Bradley University from Chicago Westinghouse. And before he left, he had become the Valley's all-time leading scorer, totaling 3,008 points. In his senior season, the Hawk was the National Player of the Year while leading the country in scoring. His career produced numerous last-second winning shots and a 63-point night in Detroit. A Valley great on and off the court, Bradley has retired jersey number 33 for the great Percy Hawkins. Along with Jim Gibbons, Bob Rathbun back in Peoria, Illinois. It's a big deficit. The first thing that comes to my mind, Jim, about Bradley's state of affairs is not to try to get it all back at once. Absolutely. If you're a coach, I think the thing you tell them is, first of all, men, we have got to get this down to double digits, down to 10. Then our next goal is to get to five. Now, if you see it's out of control after that, the one, you're not going to get it all back at once. That's the thing they have to realize. You can't start firing three-pointers. You take them one at a time. You've got to shut them down at the defensive end. You can't trade baskets, as you said, two for three or anything else. And then you go from there. And the last thing you say to yourself, if we don't do anything else, let's see if we can outscore them in the second half and salvage something out of this. It may be tough to do against this Tulsa Ball Club because they play such great defense. Only Oral Roberts has really lit them up this year for 62%. Tough to get the easy basket right. defenses. You and I talked about this before the game, Bob, and we said we'd bring it up later. My key to this game was defense because I thought the team that took the other team out of its rhythm was going to win this basketball game. And right now, the first 20 minutes, Tulsa has Bradley completely out of its rhythm on the offensive end. If Bradley can make a run, they've got the sixth man waiting to get back into the game, too, and that's his sellout crowd at Carver Arena. They start nicely with a turnover. Now you just take your time, Bob, and get into your offense and stay with what got you to where you are tonight. For three, short Burrell. There it is again. Point Dexter. Short with it, but Ruffin is there. He was bumped off the play, and here comes Billy Wright. Well, they've got the numbers because two players are behind the 10-second line for Tulsa. Burrell got this one. Forty-seven, thirty-two. This one off the glass by Cordell Love. 
And Billy Wright and a foul on Bonner. You should point out Jay Seals is back out there for Tulsa. Not a bad move, I didn't think, Bob, by Billy Wright. Sometimes I'll say, no, no, no. Take that ball, turn around, dribble it, then look for your secondary break, people. That time, I thought Billy Wright had the right idea. He was going to force Bonner to follow him. He was going to force some contact because they've got to get the tempo of the game going that way. I thought that was a good move by Billy. Wright has a chance. Talk about his, talk about his assist to turnover oh. ratio, Bob, because it's just In absolutely spectacular. In conference play. 57 assists and 11 turnovers. Yep. And overall, 107 to 29. It's 3.7 to 1. That's unheard of. He has more steals than turnovers. That is absolutely amazing. 47-33. Poindexter. Love on the cut. And he drains it. 11 for Cordell, 49-33. Parker out to right. And boy, a nice defensive play by Bonner. Last touch by Bradley. Boy, some quick hands uh -huh. for the senior. When they got them over onto the side of the floor, they had the sideline as another defender, and they got Bradley right where they wanted him and got that hand out there again in the lane. That's pretty good execution defensively right there. Seal. And a uh, foul. Had to call that one. Yep, had to. Big bio just reached right in there at King Coulee. Yeah, I've always said, Bob, and I know I say it a lot, there are two things about defense. The ability to anticipate and the willingness to sustain an effort. And boy, so far, that's what, uh, that's what Tulsa's been doing. They've played doggone good defense. And you know, the other thing, sometimes when teams aren't playing well, I hope you agree, me, agree with me, it's because the other team doesn't let you play well, right? And Tulsa is not letting Bradley play its basketball game tonight, and I'm giving all the credit to Tulsa because they deserve it up to this point. Seals for three, way off the mark. Burrell backs it up. Here's Parker. A little daylight, but can't hit the shot. Yep. Boy, they put a couple of nice screens on for him to get him that shot, but he just couldn't convert. See, now, if I'm Tulsa Bob, I'm going to break down Bradley's defense. I'm going to take as many touches as it takes to break them down and not be in any hurry, because Bradley wants that basketball. Look at this. Oh, talk about a great look. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's pretty good execution. Bradley needs the basketball. You know they're looking at the clock. They're trying to break down the numbers. And if I'm Tulsa, I'm going to make them pay every time I come down. 18 is the difference right now. The biggest lead tonight for Tulsa. And another steal for Cordell Love. What a play. Cordell to the trailing Bonner. That's very good. That is very good execution right there. Love. I hope our viewers are watching Love. He just keeps moving. And intercepted. Boy, Bonner got away with a hand check that time. <laughs> By rule, if you put two hands <laughs> on right. the offensive player, that's yep. an automatic yep. call. Right, runs into Poindexter. Undeterred. And this up off the glass by a Ken Kule, and boy, that what, wasn't even close. What terrific rotation by Shea Seals there. I mean, boy, they went and they, they shut Billy right down on the uh, on the end line by rotating, and Shea's came all the way over, and, and Seals did, and made, look at the back door. Ah, oh, beauty. Seals, though, couldn't hit the shot. Parker coming down with it. Right up and in. Gotta take it. Billy's got it. I sense that he's trying to create and penetrate a little more, Bob, to start to see if he can create some stuff. He had to take that shot. He was wide open. Right has five. 51 35. Seals looking, getting it out of Cordell Love. Outside to Bonner. Tulsa very patient offensively. 
They run the shot clock down to 10. It's Ruffin in and out. Ruffin fighting for it, still loose in the lane and picked up by Parker. Bradley's got some numbers. Parker punches, fumbles, controls, and stuffs it. Bunches with a dozen, 51-37. Crowd trying to get back into it. They haven't had much to cheer about tonight. Interesting match with Parker on seal, Bob. Shot clock hits 10. Now Bonner going to work. Just goes right past Burrell and lays it in. My goodness. That's pretty good when you do that against David Burrell. <laughs> that was a Linda Ronstadt layup. Or Kerry Blue Burrell, by you. excuse me. <laughs> Carrie Burrell, as I said earlier, is in there to play defense, and that's a pretty good move when you can do that to carry. 53-37. Timeout, Bradley. And they'll turn it into a 20. We talked earlier about the senior from Richmond, Indiana, Billy Wright. And he has indeed had the right stuff during his marvelous career here at Bradley. He's got a chance to overtake Percy Hawkins on the all-time Bradley steals list. And on the MVC career steals list, the next man in his sights is Larry Bird. He's in some pretty good company. He's coming off a game where he had 12 assists against Drake, and he's got 536 coming into this game, Bob. He went four games without committing a turnover, and three other games had only one. And that's what you need for some guy that's going to run your, run your ball club. Tulsa coming with a trap. Wright gets rid of it. The driving Deion Jackson up and off, and he draws the foul. A lot of people thought he should have taken that three-pointer when he had it right there. Tulsa came out and tried to put on the trap. Billy Wright kept his head up in the air. He got it to the open man. Not many people in this league are better, Bob, at forcing the contact and finishing the shot than Deion Jackson. He's a master at it. His fifth point tonight, all from the free throw line. The Missouri Valley Conference's active career scoring leader, Deion Jackson. Second shot. No good. Rebound to Seals. And the interception by Jackson. Deion floats it back out to right, and Bradley resets, trailing by 15. It was 17 at the half. And this one zips right past Dupat, out of bounds. A timeout on the floor in Peoria, 53-38 in favor of the Golden Hurricane. And they're off. The Breeders' Cup is finally here. Now racing's greatest day is the season's biggest hit on home video. Call 1-800-257-8000 to bring home best of the Breeders' Cup. The first 10 unforgettable years. Well, the guy does it! 70 incredible races. Well, it's a photo finish! All on one special two-hour video cassette. Best of the Breeders' Cup is now only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. 1-800-257-8000. Call now. Bradfield's computer supply is in the business of making your company work more efficiently. Bradfield's provides the latest technology and is Central Illinois' largest stocking dealer. We have all the tools you'll need, and most supplies can be ordered with next day delivery. Call Bradfield's computer supply today. Now, Paradise Riverboat Casino presents live in concert the legendary Wayne Newton. Thank you for all the joy and pain. One incredible night, March 4th at Peoria Civic Center. The spectacular Wayne Newton. Reserve seat tickets as low as 1950 include show ticket, casino cruise, and prime rib dinner buffet. Cruise and dinner coupons good through May 23rd. Make your day to come and play. Bradfield's Computer Supply is in the business of making your company work more efficiently. Bradfield's provides the latest technology and is Central Illinois' largest stocking dealer. We have all the tools you'll need, and most supplies can be ordered with next day delivery. Call Bradfield's Computer Supply today. 
Tulsa by 15. Friends at National Car Rental, you get weekend rates so low that every weekend is a national holiday. National features vehicles from compact and luxury cars, as well as minivans. National is the official car rental of the Missouri Valley Conference and the NCAA. Call National today at 1-800-CAR-RENT and start your national holiday. With Jim Gibbons, Bob Rathbun in Peoria, and the Tulsa invasion has been most successful for the Golden Hurricane. They lead it 53-38. Hernady right down the alley. Boy, and give Craig Hernady credit. See, he saw the defense shift, Bob, and instead of standing there and being a watcher, he went right to the basket, which is the one place you can hurt somebody, and they got him the ball for a wide open lay-in. Right to the corner, Jackson. Air ball, but Parker had it blocked, and a foul. Dendron with his third. Now Aaron Zobrist is coming in the ball game for Bradley. And I would think, Jim, just given the flavor of what's happening here, he was 17 at the half. We played seven minutes, and the deficit is still 17. 17 right they now. They need some home run shots. <laughs> You're right. You're Quick not offense. Not gaining anything. We said you can't trade baskets. You've got to shut them down defensively. But I'm telling you, Tulsa is really executing beautifully in their half-court offense. They're in their comfort zone. Bradley hasn't been able to force them out of that comfort zone. 11 for Anthony Parker. Amazing what seals only two points, isn't it? What's going on? <laughs> oh, this one goes behind Maldonado. 13-01 remaining. Bradley desperately trying to get back into the ball game. We'll keep an eye on Zobrist here. He comes out to get it off the back screen. Good match because Thompson has him. The pad rolls it in. You know, that's one time they converted on the turnover. I'm trying to keep track of how many times they get the turnover but don't convert at the other end. They did that time. Bonner to Thompson. Shot clock approaching 10. And a hell ball. The arrow favors Bradley. That was not a long comeback. Everybody was crying about that, and you know, Bob, you can go to the floor if you're still dribbling that basketball. Now, if he'd have gotten up, that's another matter. Then it's a travel, but it was not a travel until late. You know, it was not a travel to begin with, but then there was a tie-up afterwards. Now that's two possessions in a row. Tulsa hasn't gotten a shot at the basket. But Bradley needs to make them pay. Instead, they turn it over themselves. Thompson leading a four on two, and they throw it away. And we got a charge, though, right down below. And boy, Chad Klein took that beautifully against Thompson, I believe. No, maybe not, Bob. 11.58 remaining in the ball game, and a timeout in Peoria. <laughs> Why? 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 You're a parent. Isn't it nice to know that there's something almost effortless you can do to protect your family even more? Just ask your State Farm agent for a free family insurance checkup. It's a smart way for you to decide if your family's insurance coverage is up to date. So they'll be better protected. And maybe you'll worry a little less. State Farm I wanted a drafting career where I could draw more than just a good salary. Computers are the future of drafting, Well, I'm part of it. I trained in computer-aided drafting at ITT Technical Institute. ITT Tech could mean a successful future for you, too. Call ITT Technical Institute at 1-800-522-5333 for an informative brochure. 
Call now. That's 1-800-522-5333. Jim Gibbons, Tulsa's leading 55-41. This, of course, this Tulsa club's leaving the Valley after this year, but don't you know they'd love to make it three straight uh -huh. regular season titles, and what a way to go out. So important that they get this one on the road tonight. Yeah, and, and don't they haven't forgotten that they beat Bradley three times last year. Beat them by 20 here, beat them at home, and then beat them in the tournament. So they've got a three-game streak going against Bradley. And they've got a double-digit lead tonight. Little 1-3-1 one, one zone. Boy, and that's that's a terrific move defensively. Just to get the offense out of sync a little bit. See, they're burning time off the clock, playing right into Tulsa's hands. Parker penetrating. Kicks to Klein in the corner. In and out, stays out. And Coupette on the back of Hernady. This is fourth. Take a look and see if he reached over without getting on the body, Bob. That's what Jim Molinari's upset about. Let's see. I guess we can't see it. It looked like he got a little bit of the body down below, but he didn't get him up above. But he probably had a better look than we got there. 11-25 to play. 55-41 Tulsa. Seals. Control. Oh, now, look at how quick that man is. Look at how quick he went to that basketball. Shot clock hits six. Thompson to the baseline. Up and short. And the rebound comes to Jackson. Klein penetrating. Nothing there. Parker. Bradley can't afford the luxury oh, of taking a lot of that's, time. That's, that's, that's what the defense is doing to them, Bob. They are really having trouble finding an open shot, but he, he created his own shot right there. 12 points for Anthony Parker, 55-43, so Bradley has whittled it down to 12. And still a long time to go. Anthony Parker. To There's Zobre. the man they want right Five there. for three. Yeah. Got it. 55-46, and for the first time in a long time, Tulsa's lead is in single digits. 22nd timeout for Tulsa. And this big crowd of 10,026 tonight starting to make some noise. The one that's the man. He is their designated three-point shooter now. He's the one that severely sprained his ankle against Villanova. He's about 90% right now. He's not able to cut as hard as he usually does, but boy, when he's in, got an open three-pointer, he's going to can it. The one, the one thing I noticed, Bob, I said that I thought Tulsa should be burning down. Now, watch him. He's going to create his own. See, that's good. He created his own shot right there. I thought that Tulsa should be burning time off, but what I sense is happening, I sense they've got too many people just standing around. There's a difference between burning time and not executing your offense. Eight nothing Bradley run to get the Braves back in the ball game. 55-46. Well, I can tell after this timeout that Tulsa's moving a lot better than they have in the last five minutes on offense. Bonner, up and off. Rebound inside, Ruffin, and he's fouled. I don't know who has the uh, responsibility, Bob, of guarding Ruffin, but they better get a body into that man because that's where he causes all of his damage. He has those long arms. He's got the big body. Now, you have to realize, even if you don't get the rebound, if you're assigned to that man, it doesn't make any difference whether you get the rebound. You just have to make sure that he doesn't get that basketball. And that's what happened right down there. They broke down. Steve Robinson breathing a sigh of relief after he took the Tulsa job to find out that Michael Ruffin was still going to come to play for his basketball team. Rated the second best player in the state of Colorado last year behind Chauncey Billups. A whale of a recruit. Goes one out of two at the line. He's got eight points and has done a much better job tonight at the foul line than his 38 percentage for the year would indicate. Jackson off the screen. That's what 
they need him to do. Seven for Dion. 56-48. The Tulsa lead is down to eight. It was as big as 19. Seals. And a reach-in foul on Jackson. for the hell ball. This one stripped. And we've got an offensive foul called on Bonner. Well, we, we both thought the call was going the other way, but we've got an offensive call right there, and Steve Robinson is all upset because he thought the first one happened before the offensive player committed the foul. I was going to let you handle that one, given oh, you're the thanks. analyst. Thanks. <laughs> 56-48. I hope what I just said made sense to you. It did. I bought it. <laughs> Klein outside Zobrist. Right. Starts to penetrate. Nothing available inside. Back out to Klein. Now Jackson takes a look. Back to right. Shot clock at seven. Billy inside to Zobrist. Pumps it up and off. Give Tulsa the credit that time. They just shut that offensive set down. Ruffin. Out to Bonner, inside to Poindexter. Spins and misses. Rebound to Funches. Bradley trying to run. Right. Funches. Foul on Poindexter. And they call an intentional foul. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Look at Steve. Look at Steve Robinson. Boy, he can't buy into that call, and he can't believe it now. I thought that this man, Poindexter, right there was just trying to get him to make sure he didn't get that ball in that basket and he was going to force him to go to the line. Do you agree or not? I agree with you. I don't think that should have been called an intentional foul. Now, I think the thing that, that prompted the official to make that call, Bob, was the fact that Poindexter took his arm and waved it way back from behind like it was going to be a Tommy Hawk, and I think that's what caused him to call the call intentional. You're talking about the two and the ball out of bounds, boy. That's a big call in this game right now. And especially the way Bradley is charging with 8.09 remaining. Funches misses. And now Bradley will have it at side court. Right there, right down and underneath where the, where the foul is committed. They're going to get it now. That gives them an opportunity to get an out-of-bounds play working right now. But this is where you have to convert. Parker, up top to Klein, now to Jackson. Bonner on Jackson, good matchups. Johnson on right. Bunches. But Jackson there for the offensive rebound. Not many second chances for Bradley tonight, but there's a big one. See, Jackson's becoming a lot more active when they're making this run, Bob, and that's what they need out of that man. baseline everything going Bradley's way right now Klein spots up Bradley trying to get into its offense now they dump it low to Jackson he sees some daylight and lays it home great drop step They've got it going now, and they've got to get a timeout. That much I can tell you, because this game's getting away from them, Bob. Bradley has played superbly the last five minutes. A 19-point Tulsa lead has been whittled to three, and 7.08 to play. If you're going to take a vacation, Get the Riviera. If you're going to fish the James, don't forget the Jimmy. Don't forget your GM MasterCard, today's financial vehicle. 
Here's your chance to help the Missouri Valley Conference select the league's first Hall of Fame for basketball. Simply call 1-900-420-4NBC and vote for your all-time favorite players at Valley Schools. Choose from some of the greatest names in college basketball. Players like Oscar Robertson, Larry Bird, Hersey Hawkins, Xavier McDaniel, Walt Frazier, and others. Every school in the Valley will be represented. Vote for as many players as you want. The cost is just $1.99 per minute. So call now. That number again to vote for the Valley AT&T Hall of Fame, 1-900-420-4NBC. Hi, I'm Linda Carter, and I'm here to tell you why ordering your contact lenses direct from Lens Express is such a great idea. We're America's largest contact lens replacement service. Call now for a free catalog and save up to 50% by ordering direct from Lens Express. And I get the exact lenses my doctor prescribed or my money back. Now that's what I call service. I couldn't do without Lens Express. Call this number now for a free Lens Express catalog. The Tulsa lead at three and 7.08 to play. Friends look for the Rawlings play of the game and tonight's telecast, the winning shot, a big rebound and a key defensive move. We'll show it to you on the Rawlings play of the game. 15 to one run now, Bob, and two things I'm saying. Tulsa has stood around too much and I think Bradley has picked up their defensive intensity about 19 levels. They are really playing defense. The same amount of the decibel level <laughs> here in Carver Arena. Seals, whoa, a long three for Shea. 59-53 Tulsa. There are big shots and there are big shots. That happened to be a big one. But the crowd didn't go away. They're still making noise, so maybe the run is not over. Tulsa's opponents shooting 39% this year, but Bradley has torched them at 56% in the second oh, half. Oh, good. They were, oh, they were zoning Bob, and, they, and Billy Wright cut right into the seam right there, and they waited too long to get him the basketball. 59-53. Back door alley-oop and a jam for Ruffin and a foul. That is a set play, and they used it in the first half also, and boy, it was wide open. And you watch, the one thing you've got to make sure you do if you're the receiver here is to catch that basketball, and boy, he has got great hands, that young man, and he converted. Timeout, 6-16 to play, 61-53 Tulsa. children to save is a good idea, but next time, put that dollar in here and buy your child life insurance from Guarantee Trust Life Insurance Company. Call now for your free Great Start Kit. Just one dollar buys your child life insurance for three months. Your child is insured and you're protected financially. One dollar for three months, then just twenty dollars a year, so you'll have financial peace of mind. Call 1-800-454-7500 now. Missouri Valley Conference basketball next weekend on Saturday. Our cameras will be in Evansville as Drake comes to call. Check your local listings for the time in your area. And then next Sunday night, Southern Illinois and Illinois State. Our Missouri Valley Conference games of the week next weekend. Rough into the foul line to try to complete this three-point play. Different story tonight at that okay. foul line, as you see by those yeah. numbers. And he's only a 38% free throw shooter, and it was obvious after that one, wasn't it? <laughs> 
61-53. Tulsa leading. Bradley in a tie for the Valley lead with Illinois State. You know, they're back into the man-to-man, -man, Bob. They didn't trap on the first pass. They're playing straight up now. Jackson. Score it! <laughs> wow, that is a great shot right there. I mean to tell you, watch this replay. He got bumped. He was completely off balance. He hang, he hung long enough, Bob. Watch this. Boy, that is absolutely excellent and a nice replay. Fourth foul on Shea Seals. He's scored but five tonight. And the free throw is good for Jackson, his 14th point. Boy, when that, when that man scores, Bob, they are really tough to play and tough to defend, but they've got to get production out of Dion, and he's giving it to him in the second half. Seals. Good defense by Parker. Thompson, quick on the baseline. And ripping it down is Parker. Bradley can cut it to two with a three-pointer. <laughs> and Parker trying his luck in the corner oh, now. Gosh, Klein, he puts some great screens on for Parker. Out of Boy, bounds to Tulsa. I hope our viewers saw that. He put two straight screens on for Parker, and, and Anthony just couldn't get the room he needed to get that shot away. That was pretty good. Then he freed himself up in the long run. As you said earlier, most of this game is played without the oh. basketball. Five, four on the shot. Love just launches one. Parker the rebound. 440 to play. Again, Bradley down five and with it. Parker doing a terrific job on that defensive glass. Nice look. Boy, a great look by Billy Wright. Parker's been cleaning that defensive glass down there for them, Bob. I said that he and Seals are really good rebounders, but Seals obviously has to be careful. Jay playing with four. Hits the ball up top against Parker. Bounce inside to point, Dexter. Oh. Look at who has it. Parker again. Bradley can cut it to one. They can tie with a three. Punches. They whip it inside to Klein. And he's fouled from behind by Ruffin. Another great entry pass. It was. Went into a different set that time, Bob, and boy, they worked the set play, and it worked. And Klein should have converted this. It took him just, I don't think, I think he was very surprised that he wound up being open. Watch. They got him the ball right when he wanted it. He put it on the floor and took a little too much time and gave Ruffin a chance to recover defensively, or else he'd have had himself on the line for a three-point play. Chad has not scored tonight. A wonderful free-throw shooter. 11 here Wednesday against Drake. Kerry Burrell is in, and Deion Jackson goes out of the ball game for a breather. Klein second. Good. Deion Jackson getting a quick blow. He's right up off the bench yeah. and going right back into the yeah. game. De Deion's not going to be out of this basketball game too long right now. The people, he's the big favorite here. They were all upset. I don't know why in the world they would think Jim Molinari wasn't smart enough to know that's the guy that's carrying him right now, and he's going to have him right back on the floor. 3.41 left in the game and a one-point affair in Peoria. Harvey Penick was perhaps golf's greatest teacher. To share in his legacy, call 1-800-985-8080 and order the Little Green video. Featuring 1992 U.S. Open champion Tom Kite and two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw, the Little Green video contains more than 70 minutes of lessons, stories, tips, and drills. Rated four stars by Golf Magazine, the Little Green video gives you instant access to the secrets that have helped thousands play their best. Call 1-800-985-8080. Order the Little Green video today.
Francis Medical Center. We are here for life. Having an accident is a scary thing, and you don't need the hassles of choosing the right body shop. Hi, I'm Denny Bolton from Dee's Paint and Body Shop. When you need work done and you want it done right, come see us at Dee's. We may not be the lowest priced in town, but we'll guarantee the repairs for as long as you own your car, and we'll also guarantee a color match. At Dee's Paint and Body Shop, we'd rather explain the price than have to apologize for the quality. Dee's Paint and Body Shop, 1302 East Scioto in Peoria Heights. We've got a one-point affair in Peoria with 3.41 left in the ball game. To vote for your all-time favorite MVC players for the Missouri Valley Conference, a t and t Hall of Fame, simply call 1-900-420-4MVC. The cost of the caller is a buck ninety-nine a minute. Well, Deion's having himself a pretty good second half, Bob. He had four points, four free throws. Remember, you said he didn't have a basket in the first half. Right. He now has 16 points, and Bradley is now shooting 48%. Thompson on the cut to Seals, big three, and a foul on Parker, and Seals will get three free throws. Deion Jackson coming back in now for Bradley. Boy, that is a that, that's a big call. The one comment I was going to make was I thought maybe that Tulsa was in a position to start pounding that ball inside, see if they can get themselves on the line or have a chance at a three-point play. Shea took it. Referee was standing right there. Bobby's on the line shooting three. Six for Seals. Paul Jansen was standing right there and made the call. The one number, as Seals gets set again at the line, Jim, that just flabbergasts me is Seals with his world of talent, 63% of the line. You'll never be able to get me to explain it to you because I have a thing about free throw shooting and how somebody can have the kind of a touch that young man has and can't convert at the line. And you know he's going to go to the line right. all the time, right? Well, you just saw the great touch. Three in a row right there. Yep. Now they're zoning again. Bunches. He couldn't believe he was so wide open in the middle of that zone. He, that zone came out real high, and Funches did exactly what he should have done. He got that basketball, Bob, right in front of the two men that were down below, and he was wide open. And you're right, he, it all, he almost got distracted because he was so wide open and traveled. Bunches has scored 13 tonight. He's one out of three at the line. Right now when you look at it, 64-61, Bob, with three minutes and 13 seconds to go. It's elementary, I know it, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're down to a three-minute basketball game. Right. In every possession, the turnovers, the free throw shooting, everything is going to count right now. And the, whichever of the team plays better, Right now, they're going to they're going to walk away from here with a win. Seals. Point Dexter had it, lost it. It's out of bounds to Tulsa. Three oh two remaining. Love misses. Seals the rebound and take it right away by Jackson. Ahead to Billy Wright. Across to Klein. Now to Parker. Penetrates. Leans in. Short. And the rebound, Hernady. Parker! Oh, I thought he got a hell ball, but no whistle. Very smart by Parker because he had Hernady guarding him. He had him one-on-one -on -one and did the right thing. He took him to the basket. He just didn't convert, Bob. 2.30 left. Tulsa by two. Seals. Still being guarded by Parker. That's a terrific matchup. Thompson, shot clock at seven. Poindexter out to Thompson for three. In and out. Tulsa's really gone cold, haven't they? Yes. They haven't converted in quite a while. They have not been able to nope. get the ball inside. And they're only getting one shot besides. Even with their size and strength, they're only getting one shot and out. 
Dangerous, but Wright has it. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Low to Jackson. Dion feeling it. Putting it in to tie the game. See, they're spreading the floor enough, Bob, that they can get that ball to him and he can play one-on-one, -on -one, and that's why he's converting. Tulsa isn't able to help on him. Low. Outside to Thompson. 133 left. Jay Seals banks it, hits it. He's got 10. Tulsa by two. Having to play carefully with those four foul seals knocks it away. A minute 15 to play, 66-64. Coming back in now for Tulsa is Dwayne Bonner. Her Nady goes out for Coach Steve Robinson. Oh, pretty dangerous uh, right there. Almost cost himself a backcourt violation. Parker misses. Jim Molinari jumping up and down on his knees on the court. He couldn't believe there wasn't a foul call. 66-64, Tulsa by two. You can still play good defense you and bet, get it back. You bet. You're going to get it back right now, so don't go out there and foul them. Just make them take the shot you want them to take. The game clock, you see the shot clock now at six. Well, you can't break down right now. They've only got one second left. Love just has to hoist it, and that's a violation. The ball yeah. didn't hit the, hit the iron. That's good defense. Not very good execution by Tulsa, I didn't think, Bob, but very good defense by Bradley. 66-64. Bradley's going to bring it up and call a timeout. Call a time. And with 28.4, Bradley ball. Bradley down two. Bunches on the cut to Parker. Inside the Jackson. Tie game. 15.4 left. Tulsa runs it up. And they take the timeout with 12.5 remaining. The Tulsa uses its final timeout to set up what it hopes will be a winning play. And a half remaining and tied at 66. Well, we talked about trying to keep the ball in the hands of Deion Jackson. They had him double teamed and he Watch. was still able exactly. to get it off. That's how hot he is right now because he was absolutely, you're right, as soon as that ball went to him, I knew they were going to run somebody at him. But as you said, Bob, when somebody's on fire like that, you can just see it and read it. And he's such a crowd favorite. They really love that young man. And he's the nicest young man you'd ever want to meet. And boy, he can. Now we go to the the other end. I don't know how long they're going to wait to take that last shot. I just, I get, I get worried sometimes because I see so many teams wait too long to start to create something. But they'll get that shot. I'm not sure Seals is the one that's going to take it. Maybe Cordell Love, but I'll tell you one thing. They're going to rush about five guys to that glass once that shot goes up to see if they can get something out of it if the shot isn't good. Well, check and see the five that Robinson puts on the floor here, but he's got a lot of choices. I mean, Jay Seals, despite his foul difficulties, while he's been on the floor, he's a constant threat. Then you've got Cordell Love, Dwayne Bonner's yep. hitting some threes, but they did their damage in the first half. The second half, they have not had the big outside shooting. That's exactly right. And again, as I said in the first half, I gave Tulsa all the credit. I'm giving the credit to Bradley in the second half because they've taken Tulsa out of its game. The one thing is they can spread the floor enough. Tulsa can, Bob, with their people that can score. But even though they don't have a big inside scoring presence, they may be able to get it inside. Now, Seals is going to throw it in. You have to yeah. be conscious he may get yeah. it right uh, back. He, he's going he's to get it back. And look where Love is. He's underneath the basket right now with Ruffin. Tulsa trying to win it here. Tulsa. Opening up the whole side of the floor. Three seconds. Two. Loose ball. We've got overtime. I'm not 
sure what they had in mind, but Bradley just denied them all over the place. They did. Bradley played terrific defense. They opened up the side of the floor, and Rod Thompson was going to go that way. They got, let's see if we can look at it. They got the ball down in the corner, but watch the defense that Bradley's playing down in this right-hand corner down there. Watch that, Brent. There's the pick, but boy, he got around Ruffin's pick and came right out and stopped Love from even getting a look at the basket. That's, that's decent defense right there. Overtime in the Valley on Sunday night, tied at 66. In the law of the jungle, it's survival of the deadliest. These are the weapons that changed history, and this is their story. Brute Force is the ultimate video history of weapons in war, in a collection only from Time Life Video. Join host George C. Scott and watch man's never-ending search for the ultimate weapon. See the latest smart weapons tested on the battlefield, and look back at the breakthroughs and disasters along the way. Go airborne with your first video. Fighters for just $9.99 and see the complete history of airplanes at war. Call now and we'll also send you aircraft carriers absolutely free. That's two videos for the price of one. Future videos each trace the complete evolution of a single weapon system. See how it feels to have the ultimate weapon on your side. Call now and order. To order your brute force. We head to the first overtime period, tied at 66. I'm Bob Rathman with Jim Gibbons from Peoria. We thought we'd have a dandy. It took a while to materialize, but a dandy we have. This is Tulsa's first overtime game of the season. Bradley is 0-1 in overtime. It was the season opener at Kansas State. And K-State won at 75-72, so Bradley 0-1 in overtime periods. Each team has a timeout now. You're right, the overtime period. Each team's going to continue to go to the same basket, each team with an additional timeout. And that's the only other time you'll see a jump ball other than the start of the game. Punches. Trying to get the lead. And a foul on, on Love, I believe. Cordell Love with the personal. Anthony Parker is going to the free throw line for Bradley to try to give the Braves their first lead of the wow. game. Wow. It's been an uphill battle, I'll tell you that. But see, the thing is, Bob, you know, you get it to this point and you've expended all that energy. You know how many times people will say you expend all that energy and then, boy, you just have that letdown. They've got to play this five minutes as hard as they've played the last 10 or 12 or 15. Parker hits a ball. I think that's where the home crowd gives you such a big oh. boost. They just pump that adrenaline in you going, get you going. 68-66. Here's Seals, operating with four personal, short with it. Shea trying to run it down and does, bumped out of bounds, and the ball belongs to Tulsa. Four nineteen left in overtime, and Jim Molinari is saying the team possession was not, was not lost after the missed shot. The shot clock should not have been reset. Yeah, that's, what he, that's what he's after them for right and now. I can't remember now. Did Seal yeah. shot hit the rim? Well, I can't tell you, Bob. I don't know that. But regardless, yeah. if it did hit iron, yes. the new shot clock right. should have begun because Tulsa did not lose team possession. Seal's basket, we're told, yeah. did hit the rim. Yep, no question about that. Right here, Paul. Right here. The officials, when it comes to timing questions, can use the replay. Rick, do you want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. So we'll replay it for the officiating crew so they can take a look and see that it hit the rim. He, he needs it. Here, here it is. Here it is. Seals penetrating and going up for the shot. But now technically the new shot clock is going to resume when Seals saves it from going out of bounds. Yeah, he, that's technically when the new shot clock is 
shot clock should begin. Sounds kind of strange because you, you, you're not thinking that you have possession, but by rule, that's when the shot clock should reset. Inside to Poindexter. Seals for three. Missed that one. Bradley leading by two. Right out to Parker. And Parker lays it in. Now Bradley by four. Love for three. That's why. Here's Seals inside. He's shut off and a foul on Bradley. And two free throws coming for Shea Seals. That last basket by Parker, that's nice I, something. I just asked him back in the truck if they'd save that basket because I was really surprised. He dribbled from one side, and that's exactly what the point you're making about. He dribbled from one side to the other, and nobody on Tulsa came over. Now watch. He's going to start on the left. He's going to go all the way around. There's three players in blue right there, and not a one of them went after him and stopped them from laying that ball in the basket. Bonner obliged. He that just was, got right out of the way. Un unbelievable. The other thing is that Tulsa's not getting a whole lot out of their half-court offense, no. Bob. I don't like to be critical, and it's not my job to try to coach anybody's club, and I've never done that, but, boy, they're firing away. A lot of shots from outside. There's a call over the back by Poindexter, but they're just not getting a lot out of their half-court offense. They relied on that three-point shot to build the big halftime lead. And Look over the scorecard. They've only got one three in the second half. Exactly. And, and Bradley is playing the kind of defense in this half that Tulsa played in the first half. And I've always said that the whole objective of defense is to know your opponent and to try to get him to do things he doesn't want to do. And they've got Tulsa doing things right now that they don't want to do. That's the whole objective of defense. you got to know your opponent and then get them to do things they don't want to do. Clyde goes two for two at the line. Chance points tonight at the strike. A five-point Bradley lead at 72-67. Seals gets a screen. Klein comes out on him on a mismatch. Seals. Nope. And the rebound to Parker. Look at who's got that rebound. Boy, does he clean that defensive glass. Billy Wright to Parker. I'd find Dion if I could. I'd Here find Dion. <laughs> I'd take as much time as I needed to get him. Parker off the screen. Fires a three. A 27-point turnaround. Watch how I said most of it's played without the ball. Watch Parker. He came all the way from the other side. But again, as Bob said earlier, you've got to get that ball to people when they're open. The longer it takes, then the more time you're giving the defender that they set the screen or the block on to recover. They didn't give them a chance that time. He And you could tell as soon as he got that ball, couldn't you, Bob? Yeah. He, had a, he had his sights on that basket, and boy, he canned it. Steve Robinson in the Tulsa huddle. His ball club now is trailing by eight with 2.38 remaining in the first overtime. And Jim Gibbons, they have been able to score only one point here in the overtime period. So let's credit, let's credit Bradley. We didn't give him much credit in the first half, but we've gave him a lot in the second half and in the overtime even more because they've taken Tulsa right out of its game plan. They've taken them out of their comfort zone. And I think Bradley, truthfully, is playing with a whole lot more intensity the second half and in the overtime. And a point you made, Bob, I think they're playing a lot more under control. They came out and they were so fired up. Didn't you right. think so? At the beginning of the game, they were so fired up that it was almost like it was working against them for a while. The scars of this one, well, Anthony Parker has done a terrific job. 
Look at the double-double with those rebounds. Seals' numbers are off tonight, but keep in mind, he had three fouls in the first half and played only four minutes in the first half. But he's still out there, and as long as he's out there, tells him yeah. he's got a chance. And you can't say it was because he was on the bench because they built up the big lead when he was on the bench. Right. Cordell Love, through traffic, loose ball, Parker's got it, hell ball, and the arrow is going to Tulsa. That's the one thing you can be sure that's going to happen if that basketball is on the floor, you can bet there's going to be bodies all over the place because at this stage you can't wait around for somebody else to pick it up. 2.29 remaining, first overtime. outside the Thompson. Here's Point Dexter. Shot clock at 10. Inside her Nady. Strong move. No whistle. A lot of contact. It was at the bucket or underneath it, so they didn't put air in the whistle. And Bradley and Gets the foul here as Parker will go to the line. Thought it may have been a thought it may have been a pretty good no call, Bob. I'm not sure because we're at the other end of the floor. But that is the first time in a long time. Uh, that's you know that's pretty good no. You, you don't think it was a well, good no call? I think it's a tweener. Okay, you know, it's one okay. of those that could go either way. <laughs> either way is right. But you know that's the first time that Tulsa has gotten that ball inside yeah. in ages. Parker, who had nine in the first half. This is the foul shot. He's got 19. He has scored seven of Bradley's overtime points. Well, that was interesting. Love going out. Three-point shooter, Johnny Gendron coming in. Love had three threes in the first half, only one two-point field goal in the second half in overtime. Parker's second shot. The amazing thing is most of this crowd is standing. They haven't sat no. down for quite a while. Sell some more seats. <laughs> 6.67. Seals for three. Nope. Oh, the whole flavor of this game has changed. Point Dexter stopping things with 148 left. And Ray fouls out of the game. If they're going to foul, Bob, the one thing they've got to start doing is trying to get somebody else on the line except Anthony Parker because he's shooting an incredible 82% on the air. Now, the other thing is, it's a chess match because what's Bradley going to do? They're going to put the ball in the hands of a guy like Anthony Parker. So you've got to try to shut him down and keep it out of his hands and get somebody else on there. And now, as you said, you've got to try to trade three for two or three for one or two for one, whatever you can get out of it. now with 22. We mentioned earlier his season high of 30 came against Georgia Tech. This is the seventh time he has scored 20 plus. In the second half in overtime, Tulsa is one of 14 from three-point range. And now they throw it away. Boy, I give Bradley a lot of credit, and I give credit where credit is due because they have really got Tulsa out of its comfort zone, Bob. That's a shot I thought Hernady had to take. He had nobody within 10 feet of him. He was standing as close to the basket as he's ever going to get. At this point in the game, that's one of the few chances you've got. They passed it out, and they, they just haven't gotten anything out of their offense, and I give Bradley all the credit. Tulsa is in a situation where they need points. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, you can't even worry yeah. about shooting threes. Right. And Zobris will go to the line. And guess what he's shooting from the line? Only 78%. At about this stage, Bob, I don't blame Tulsa because I happen to think that's about the only chance you've got. It's a gamble now. You've got to start trapping. You've got to start taking chances. You've got to get people on the line. That's all there is to it. Mr. 
to Zobris. Thankful that you jinxed him on the free throw. <laughs> Works every time. Well. <laughs> there it goes back for the second time. Six for Zobris. Good change right there. Funches, defense, rebounder, strength underneath inside. Nothing wrong with that move at all. An amazing 31-point turnaround in this game. And Bradley's going to get some more. Showtime! They may win this thing by 19. <laughs> Boy, what an amazing turnaround, huh? And the three by Gendron. I think that's their first basket in quite a while, is this? Their first of the overtime. They had one free throw up to then by Seal. Well, that's amazing. 51 seconds left. That's what you call pretty good defense. And I give Bradley even more credit, Bob, because I, I remember the point I made. They really had to expend a ton of energy to get to get back to even. You know, we talked about getting it to 10. We talked about getting it to 5. They did all of that before. Then you can have that big letdown in the overtime period. And the shot is good by Billy Rock. 83-70. And blocked by Parker. Why not? He's done everything else. <laughs> Deion Jackson and Parker making eye contact. Yeah. And Jackson yeah. wanted it. So Anthony says, no, I don't think so. I won't take any <laughs> chances right now. Well, this crowd of 10,000, 26 tonight here in Peoria, have been treated to a most memorable game. In, in here than it is outside, right? Anthony looks for his 24. So Tulsa, which swept three from Bradley a year ago, including winning by 20... Extended into overtime tonight. And Bradley is winning it going away. 85-70. Thompson had it knocked away by Wright. Here's Bonner missing. And the lineman is good. And you can hear Jim Molinari yelling, don't foul. That's a basket you're going to give him right now. Just keep the clock going. And I think Tulsa is conceding. They're not going to foul anymore. Yeah. Just run it out. Don't take a shot right now. That's what Jim just said. No shot. And Jim Molinari goes to midcourt and shakes a hand to Steve Robinson. Bradley has won it in overtime. 85-72. And with the victory... Bradley takes a half a game lead in the Missouri Valley race over Illinois State and sends Tulsa two back in the loss column. An amazing turn of events in Peoria, Illinois. We'll be back to talk about it right after this. Two-point turnaround for Bradley. Down 19. They won it by 13 in overtime. Tonight's TWA player of the game for his overall effort, Anthony Parker. 24 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists tonight. Our player of the game brought to you by TWA. But Bradley was able to, t to send this game into overtime thanks to the strong second-half effort of Deion Jackson. And this is our Rawlings play of the game through the double team. Jackson, who scored 20 tonight, puts this one up 
and in. That sent the game into overtime, and his teammates took it from there, and Bradley won it by 13. Our play of the game, a presentation of Rawlings. For Jim Gibbons and our entire crew, this is Bob Rathman from Peoria saying so long, everybody. Bradley wins it in overtime.